Hey everybody. So, working on my new online course, and I'd like to talk about why, why is the hardest SLP question in swallowing. Now, there's been a lot of online chatter where an SLP will say, I am using X strategy to target X problem. And then at some point, if I chime in or somebody chimes in and says, why are you using X strategy to target X problem? Usually there's a period of silence. Or my favorite is when they find a paper that doesn't necessarily answer the question, but they post it and say, well, according to so-and-so at all, this works on that. Well, see, the thing is that you should know what it is you're targeting. So let's say a speech pathologist says, I have been using the chin tuck to target poor clearance of the bolus or residue from the volecular space. And I say, oh, why? The answer isn't because it works, right? The answer should actually be based in physiology. But why is that so hard to do? Well, here is why I think why is hard to answer. First of all, you have to know what normal is like. For instance, how does the bolus typically get cleared from the molecular space? One. Two is you need to identify why in this particular patient that isn't happening. So is it the base of tongue? Is it epiglottic inversion? Is it the pharyngeal squeeze? What's the reason why it's not clearing? So we're already two levels deep into physiology. And the third is the difficult one as well, which is what particular strategy is meant to target this particular problem, which is out of the range of normal? Oof, that is some elaborate stuff, right? So now we're three layers deep and we need to put them all together. So what would be a reasonable answer besides it worked? The chin tuck position aided in helping the epiglottis to move a little bit more horizontally. Therefore, pharyngeal constriction can catch the free end of the epiglottis, pull it down while aiding in epiglottic clearance. See there? That wasn't so hard. Yeah, actually it is a little bit more of a step away from what we often talk about as speech pathologists and dysphagia management. In other words, a lot of times people let you get a pass by simply saying, this is what I did and it worked. Well, you know, I gotta say, uh, we should be challenging each other far more to answer the why. In fact, we should be volunteering the why, especially if we're training new students. If you're training students as a clinical supervisor or as an instructor of a dysphagia course, or really if you're even commenting on anything online, it's your duty to offer the why, to help people to poke holes in your rationale. That's the best way for us to learn. And then if it's not offered, it's our job to challenge people and ask them for the why so we can be begin in a good discourse about really incorporating physiology, poor physiology, and strategies that are supposed to target it. Okay, I'm done.